Okay, I'm going to uh, try doing this sitting down because I need a few more fingers to do some stuff. So. Um, okay. So, hi everyone, I'm James Mee. I've um, been working with Ruby since uh, 2005 when Ben Griffiths persuaded me to join Ruby. Um, I'm now an independent freelance developer, um, my own company, um, author of Ruby Mocking Framework. I recently joined Free Range, which is a developers cooperative set up by James Allen and James Andrews. Um, I live in Durham, way up in the north of England. Um, if I start losing my thread, it's because I've had to catch a train very early this morning and nothing to do with the fact that I'm getting very old. <laughs> um, you can find me um, on the web as uh, Flowhopper, which is a reference to the two and a half years I spent in uh, Antarctica in my misspent years. Um, as an excuse for a quick slide. Um, so, what we're going to talk about um, oops, the, um, uh, so Ruby Coco, Mac Ruby, and Hot Coco is the kind of things I'm going to touch on. However, to warn you, I'm not really an expert on Coco or Objective C. I uh, come at it definitely from the Ruby angle. Um, because I'm not an expert, I'm going to focus mainly on how to get started writing a desktop app for OS X. Um, I'll also show you how I go about testing uh, such an app, um, both exceptions testing and unit testing. Um, I have to confess, I got a bit carried away with this testing part, um, so <laughs> you can bear with me a bit. Um, so, also, if you don't mind, I'd rather just save questions to the end, because I'm not very good at doing this thing. Anyway, um, let's have a quick look at uh, the options we've got. We've got um, Ruby Coco, Mac Ruby, Hot Coco, well that's really just part of uh, Mac Ruby now. Um, Ruby Coco is the oldest of the three and uh, shipped with Leopard, um, or at least with the developer tools on Leopard. It uses the standard Ruby 186 uh, virtual machine. Um, it bridges the gap between Ruby, uh, sorry, between Ruby and Objective-C runtimes using libfi. Uh, this bridging is a bit slow, but don't write Ruby off, uh, Ruby Coco off just because of that. Um, it might well be fast enough for what you need. Um, this bridging means you end up with proxy objects in the Ruby world. Um, the proxies representing Objective C objects. Um, because Ruby Coco is based on the standard Ruby VM, um, you can't have native traits. Um, the other thing is that um, the Ruby source in your app will actually ship in your app bundle. Um, you, you have no option about that. Um, that might be a concern if, if you're worried about people looking at your source code. Um, if you want your app to run on older versions of OS X, you can em embed the Ruby Coco framework in the app. Um, but you're still reliant on a compatible version of Ruby being installed on the Tiger machine. So your app can only run on um, Tiger or later in that case. Um, so let's compare that uh, with the newer Mac Ruby. You have to install it, um, at least if you want the update version of it. It's, um, it's fundamentally different from Ruby Coco. It's an implementation of, uh, of a Ruby 1.9 uh, virtual machine. And it's built on top of the core foundation and Objective-C. Um, since there's only a, a single runtime um, and no bridge in this case, um, then it's much faster than Ruby Coco. Um, and there's no proxying involved, um, so an instance of Ruby string is also an instance of Objective-C's NS mutable string. It's actually yeah, implemented as an instance of NS mutable string. Since the 0.5 um, beta version, <coughs> they replaced YARG with LLVM, which all strange letters to me, but uh, basically the effect is that it's much improved performance. Um, of MacRuby, and you can now use native threads. Uh, what's more, you can use, uh, I haven't actually managed to try this yet, um, <coughs> you can use an ahead of time compiler to build Mac O compatible object files. Um, this means you don't have to ship Ruby source code in your app bundle. So keep it away from prime eyes if you need to. Um, because MacRuby sits on top of the Objective C runtime, the target machine's got to have uh, Objective-C version 2.0 at least, and that means it's got to be Leopard or, or above. 
So um, hot cocoa is um, an extension to MacRuby. The idea is to make constructing and configuring your GUI simple enough that it can be done without using Interface Builder. Um, that's the, it's kind of raison d'etre. It's a, a thin, idiomatic kind of Ruby layer sitting above Cocoa. Um, although you can think of it as a, an abstraction layer, it's not really a layer as such because uh, it kind of uh, adds methods <coughs> to existing Cocoa objects. So you still got all the original Cocoa functionality um, available to you. Um, it also provides sensitive faults, which just cuts down on sort of the velocity of the code um, and gives you kind of sensible things. Um, all of this has the effect of making the code much more succinct, which is a good thing as far as I can see. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, sorry. Um, to, to illustrate the Ruby proxy objects I mentioned earlier, let's have a quick look at a Ruby Coco IRB session. Um, we have to explicitly require Ruby Coco in this case. Um, the Ruby string is just a Ruby string, as you can see. Um, constructing an Objective C uh, NS string is a little verbose. Um, you see the joy of Objective C for me in there. Um, and we have to use a special method if we want to see what the Objective C methods are on that. That's basically because it's a proxy object. Um, in contrast, we look at a um, MacRuby IRB session. Uh, no need to explicitly require MacRuby in this case. And um, the Ruby string is actually an Ansible string, as I mentioned before. Um, and there again, you can just get the methods like that. Although there is an extra flag on there that tells you whether you want Objective C methods or not. Anyway, in terms of getting started with uh, Ruby Code, uh, well, with either of these, um, I think it's really important to um, have a bit, put a bit of work into learning to read Objective C code. It might sort of scare the daylights out of some people, um, and quite understand that. Um, but it's, it's worth it, learning to read it is much easier than learning to write it. I think, and learning to read it means you can understand the documentation, you can translate it into Ruby code, and it's all kind of much easier. Um, some of the significant differences, um, which I'm just going to quickly highlight, is um, obviously there's explicit pointers um, and sort of declare types, which just like you get in C language, which a lot of people may be familiar with. Um, there's a declaration of classes interface and declaration of its um, implementation of separate, which is like <coughs> Java and C++. Sending messages is basically the same as calling methods, um, but the syntax looks really quite different. And to give you a bit of a flavour of some of this, let's have a quick look at a bit of code. So here in Objective-C, a simple case, a method call without parameters, the target object and the method indication um, are enclosed in square brackets and separated with space. And then you've got the joy joy semicolon on the end of the line. And we'll just quickly see the Ruby Coco and Mac Ruby, obviously very straightforward. Um, have a look at a slightly more complicated case. We've got the, um, a method with parameters. You can see the explicit pointer um, and type declarations, the NS sound star. And so I separated that out into a, a different line. Uh, each parameter is labeled in the method call. So you've got in it with contents of files, one label, and by references, the other label. Um, the method signature is made up of all those labels. So if you want to look in the documentation, you often need to know what all those labels are. Um, and there's the Ruby Coco and Mac Ruby equivalent. So you can see they're a little bit easier. So the next thing I want to show you is a simple Hello World GUI app, uh, which is a window and a button. And when you click the button, it's going to print out Hello World to the console. Amazing. Um, <coughs> just sort of don't really want you to have to uh, read the code. It's just to give you an idea of the amount of code. Um, and then he's going to quickly show you the Ruby Coco equivalent and the Mac Ruby equivalent. So here's Ruby Coco and Mac Ruby. It's actually not very much difference between the two. Um, it's just really the, the underlying implementation has changed. There's not very much that you need to do to translate between the two. Um, and then an interesting one is this Hot Coco, um, which is obviously a lot shorter and a lot more Ruby-like and be kind of very sort of, seem a bit more familiar to a lot of Rails types, I guess. Um, I see it a bit bigger so you can see what's actually going on. Um, 
So you can see creating a window, certain dimensions, or certain position, I think, sorry, um, and setting the action on the button to print Hello World. Very straightforward. Um, I'm going to stick with MacRuby and Hot Cocoa from pretty much now on, I think, uh, mainly just so I can get the code of my slides. <laughs> Uh, there's a bit, a bit more to it if you actually want to build an app bundle as such, as, rather than just this little bit of code. So let's have a look at how we do that with this bit of code. Um, this is the directory structure you can use with HotCoco. Um, the build YAML file just contains a bit of metadata about the app, quite straightforward. Um, and then the application RV file is what we were just looking at a minute ago. So the window and the button and so on. And then there's a, a menu.rv, which I think is pretty optional, and just uh, if, if you want to, in this case, you just got a quick button uh, in, a, in a main menu at the top. Um, and then in the rate file, we've got a couple of requires that bring in um, some hot code. I think if you use uh, four fairly straightforward um, rate class, clean, build, run, deploy, the ones a little bit more interesting, so deploy one which uh, embeds the MacRuby framework in your app. Um, I should mention this point actually, I'm using um, MacRuby 0.4 at the moment rather than the 0.5 beta release. Um, so I'm not doing any of those compile steps. Or not. And lastly, there's the icons stuck in there. So I'm um, going to have a quick go at uh, running that if we can. And some more commands on so this is going to build one which happens to have the framework in, so it takes a little bit longer than doing it without the framework. It's still pretty quick. And then, yes, I'm using Mac Rake rather than Mac um, Rake. Hopefully, there we go. Your app has appeared in the bottom. You see that? Uh, if I click the button, so, moving on, um, we can have a um, quick look at the insides of the app bundle that we've generated. So, I don't know how many people are sort of familiar with the, the insides of what an app bundle looks like, um, but there you can see the MacRuby framework that's been embedded in, in a framework structure inside there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that. So, um, kind of on and off over the last few months, I've been playing about with a, a toy project which needed a, a GUI app. Um, this is why I kind of got into um, mainly the code where it happens. Um, so, my app that I've been working on is uh, it's a bit like delicious for iPhone apps, um, and it uh, hasn't had a lot of exposure yet. Um, but it's uh, installed.com in case you're interested in having a look. Um, I've been using Ruby Coco with TextMate, um, the old bit of interface builder, to develop the desktop app. And the main part of it is this preference plane, so it's not actually got a massive amount of stuff on the front end, quite a lot of being on behind the scenes. Anyway, um, the point is that although I did manage to do some unit testing um, while I was building this, I haven't found a decent way of doing some exceptions testing. And someone asked on the mailing list um, about testing, and that's kind of got my interest, as I mentioned earlier. So, um, in preparation for the talk, I decided to have a bit more of a go look around, see what I could find. Um, and I found something, I think a couple of people have mentioned something like this to me before, but I actually found this in a book, um, Scripted Goo Testing with Ruby. Uh, and the idea is to use the Apple Scripts um, accessibility frameworks to See, you can't quite see, can't quite see the um, checkbox at the bottom. I might do something for that. Maybe. 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 Um, anyway, it's just a, a, a tick box you need to switch on on your machine to use this thing. Um, and then there's a whole set of uh, API uh, that you can use. And it allows you to send uh, keystrokes, uh, mouse clicks to nearly any program, um, even if it doesn't expose a proper Apple Script interface. And the way um, we can do that is uh, there's a, a weird app called System Event app which you can use AppleScript with, and then you can send stuff to even I think to sort of carbon apps, um, really pretty much any app you care to, to choose. 
Um, anyway, I decided to have a go at writing some acceptance tests for the Hot Cocoa um, example app. This is also a character for example, um, which you can see at least part of here. Um, so firstly, I'm going to zip through quite a bit of code here. Um, it's not really important detail of it, it's more just uh, some of the, the ideas in here that I think are, are useful. Um, so I basically used the RV app scripts um, gen to talk Apple script from Ruby and talk to the calculator app. Uh, probably the most fiddly thing was just working out what um, components were in, were in what hierarchy and what methods to use this uh, app script um, gem to, to do it. Um, and there's actually, uh, okay, so here's a couple of methods that are actually sending clicks to, to well, it's really just one that's sending clicks to the button, and it's a sort of helper method that sends a bunch of um, key presses one after the other. Um, and then I've also got an assertion that checks what's displayed at the top of the calculator. Uh, check it's displaying what you, you hope. Um, in terms of helping out, working out um, what the hierarchy of components is and stuff, but this um, UI element inspector, which I'm not quite sure it's actually installed, I've forgotten where I got it from now, I think it's on the Apple website somewhere. Um, and it basically uses the accessibility API um, and gives you a, a kind of real time display of what's under the cursor in terms of an XML set of components. Uh, it's not brilliant, but it, it does give you a chance of trying to figure out what components are where. Anyway, um, so that allowed me to write um, some exception sets, like this beginning of this one here. Um, so you see, I mean, it's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to just, um, you know, talk in very user terminology or whatever, just like, um, you know, um, cucumber type thing or whatever. Um, and here we just, in the second test, or well, the first test there, we're just adding um, a couple of numbers together and checking whether the answer is correct. Um, anyway, so I created a whole bunch of those and wired them all up to a task and hopefully, we're going to go out and that. Okay, so we're building the app at this point. And then, so I'm actually using a single rake file uh, with a kind of condition in it. So one bit of it uses my this bit uses my rake, and one bit uses my rake. Just one easiest thing at a time. Hopefully, it's going to run some tests. <laughs> yeah. It's like magic. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like Selenium or whatever for um, getting apps. Um, and it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, and I was quite, I was a bit sort of despondent that I hadn't managed to find them before, so I was quite pleased to have this. And maybe other people found it before me. So. Um, anyway, so once I was happy with the test coverage, I thought um, I should show you some unit tests. So I was looking at the, the code um, for this calculator app, which is there, um, and I realised it's going to be difficult because it's just all written in one big class um, with no separation of model view controller. Um, so since I had decent acceptance test coverage, this is where I kind of got a bit carried away. I thought it would be instructive to try and do some refactoring. Um, and, and try and separate the concerns out. I'm not sure how sensible the concerns I've pulled out, the, the, the classes I've pulled out are, um, but one of the first ones I got was a, a display class, which just kind of represents a model of the um, top part of the calculator. Um, and what's the thread? Um, yeah, so I hope you can see that that. Uh, makes it a bit clearer that the zero gets overwritten in the display when another digit is entered. And so I mean, maybe you haven't thought about the calculator, but if you have zero on the screen normally, you press a digit and it gets, gets overwritten. Um, so you can see in this fragment of a, a unit test um, that entering a single um, digit number should result in us displaying a single digit. So now we've started to get to the unit test type coverage. And so another class I pulled out was an accumulator, which is kind of just in the bit that does the math. So you're pushing values on um, with operations in there. 
Uh, it literally just does a simple eval, joining them together in spaces. Um, but it's, I think it's really, if you, I, I can't really easily show you the original code because it's just so much of it. But, um, and, you know, uh, sorry, I haven't done the units have So, that, as I say, I've got parallel where I pulled you out as well. So, that's just kind of wiring the, the different components together again. Um, and yeah, there's some more of it there. But hopefully it's, it should be pretty, sorry, it, uh, it should be pretty straightforward to see what's going on. And this, this should just be stuff that's to do with presentation here. Um, and, uh, okay, so um, having pulled all this stuff out of the, the main files is kind of what's left, so it's pretty much control the stuff. Um, I brought back the sort of setting of the actions into here. Um, something that's getting made to be clearer. But so in here, for example, the buttons are just in order, whereas previously they had to be kind of out of order, they had to be in the order that they were being put onto the UI. But we can keep that bit in the, in the view now, um, which makes it all a bit more straightforward. Um, and then the rest of it literally just wiring up the, the modern view to the events, um, the actions. Um, so I guess I have a bunch of unit tests and just for the hell of it, should be able to run those as well. Um, Oops. Yeah, they happen a little bit quicker than the other ones, so let's just bunch them there. <laughs> So just done and um, just kind of to summarise, um, really what I wanted to get across is just that um, really with photos is a lot easier than you think uh, to get going. Um, and I think that acceptance testing with the accessibility API is a really kind of powerful way to um, get your um, GUI app on control and, and to um, keep, it, keep the code clean. Um, and I think the way to, for me, the way to approach unit testing is, is this, this sort of age old separate concerns, model, gear, control, code separate, and then you can write decent unit tests um, around the bits that you want. Um, I guess in this case, there wasn't any kind of real calls to um, underlying framework, Apple frameworks, but um, I think you could uh, easily mock those out if you want, if you've got the, the potential to do that. Um, but I think I'm pretty much done. So, any other questions? Let's <laughs> quick round this. It's a quick one. Um, yeah. Just sorry. What? What is the? What's the difference between Mac Rake and Rake? Um, the difference yeah. between Mac Rake and Rake. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's. Basically, you get a full set of um, what we'll call Mac IRB, Mac Rake, and Mac Ruby binaries. Um, when you install Mac Ruby, to keep it separate from the, the Ruby installation, I guess. Yeah. I think it's just saying so you can run them both without having to explicitly state the path for the Rake that comes with Mac Ruby instead of the Rake that you would normally be using. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I think it was like. There's a really good syntax for Mac Ruby on, I think it was like slide 57 or something. <laughs> and I just wondered if that was a typo or if that was genuinely, because it was, um, oh no, back, it go back maybe like 52. You mean the, the example of calling the method with the second parameter? Yeah. It's got the code on it. It's got the code on it. Yeah. yeah. That's Ruby on 9. Ruby yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, so it's got like, oh, five. Okay, fine. Yeah. I was like, and uh, there's an application called UI Browser, which is like a more sophisticated version of the uh, Apple's own thing for introspecting the, uh, the accessibility toolkit addresses for things. So you can make it much easier to find. What, what was it called? It's called UI Browser. UI Browser. Um, I can look it up and I'll email the cool. thing to you. And um, 
Do you reckon you could unit test an Objective-C application using MacRuby using the techniques you outlined here? Yeah, I think you should be able to. I was thinking about that. Um, in fact, it, it would make more sense to do that because you might obviously have. So in my case, I'm using my underlying Ruby as one eight six. Um, but if I was because it's actually a Mac Ruby application, then the underlying code would be one point nine. So it actually it would make much more sense to to unit you know, test it with Mac Ruby. Oh, I mean actually unit test an Objective C application. So something. Oh, see, um, to unit test it. Yeah. I think. Probably. There's, there's like OT tests and things like that which might be more If you go to the MacRuby blog, uh, there's an article to do There's an article on the MacRuby website which explains exactly how to test an Objective-C app using MacRuby. Uh, there are some limitations. Um, I can't remember exactly what they are, but it's possible. So this kind of follows on with your UI controls thing. Um, when, you're, when you're writing sort of a Selenium test or something similar, um, or Cucumber, you want to try and find the elements that you're going to test uh, by a you know, label for an HTML form or something like that, rather than wanting to use a full X path to get down into it. These acceptance tests, can you find the elements from a sort of high level? I want to press the button that says OK, or do you have to say, but, and it's, so you have to create really, really verbose acceptance tests. Yeah, I, I, at the moment, um, from what I've seen, it's pretty clunky, um, but I think it'd be pretty straightforward to write a little um, kind of API framework, or whatever, to do that um, for you. I, I, I think it's uh, definitely a way forward. I mean, something I didn't mention is that, so if you had a proper accessible app that has actual Apple script actions in it, um, that actually might be quite a good way <laughs> of going about because you get then higher level actions that you could um, push you less brittle. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Does the um, accessibility uh, and, um, that go down into the web page itself? Web page? If you're, say, open up a browser? That's no, no, I, I doubt it. Do. Yeah, because it's the it's the it's the assistive devices thing. So if you can get to it from an assistive device, it will give you an address that you can get to it through the system events thing. Right. So you won't get masses of information, but you'll be able to go, can I select the fifth drop down on that <laughs> web page, please? So you could use it to drive the browser testing. You could. You'd be mental. <laughs> 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 it wouldn't it would work if it had proper assistive support. Yeah. Uh, Safari Water actually does that. Safari. Okay. Does Mocha work with MacRuby and does the parameters matches uh, support the uh, this 1.9 syntax at the bottom? So, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I believe Mac, uh, Mocha works in MacRuby. Um, it's a guy, is it Eloy? Um, he, he's on the MacRuby team. Um, he's definitely. Uh, push some changes my way. I can't quite remember if all of them have actually made it in to mock up, but um, he, I think I think it does work. I think they use the, so mock has got quite a big lot of uh, acceptance tests uh, with it, and they use those for a while to kind of push out a lot of bugs in, in that Ruby. Um, I think the, the thing they had a bit of problem with was getting so many tests to work in Ruby or something like that. But, um, sorry, in Ruby mock up. But, um, no, I think it does work. I suppose, uh, oh, okay. No, I'm not sure that it does. Do that. I don't know. I can one way or the other. I think that's just a It's just a hack. Surely yeah. it, would, it wouldn't not. So it's a hack. It's found at Ruby 1.9, so there's a very good question, but I don't actually know the answer. Um, it's a little bit of work. Anything else? Yeah. Make this um, how mature is, is that rubric which you want to release to that to a non developer with it? So, my impression is that um, once this, so uh, then 0.5, we've got a second beta out now. Uh, my impression is that once that goes to release, that it's actually be pretty decent. Um, yeah, it's just a subjective judgment call, really. Um, I certainly think it would be. You know, as as, um, as decent as Ruby code gets. So I, I think once it's released, I'll be definitely moving to my Ruby. Uh, it, uh, 
and I'm words and all that. Um, Ruby Coco um, is kind of dead now, because I think most of us who works on that now work on Ruby, so Ruby Coco is not going to get Correct. Okay, thanks very much, guys.